Welcome back to the channel, everybody. I am Mick Alfenin. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And if you could, please turn that like button into a rocket and send it straight to the moon. So, I released my video some time back titled Stellar's Battle to Unleash the, the Billions, okay? And in that video, we cover Stellar's battle with the regulatory body known as FinCEN. However, in that video, I also stated that Stellar was battling two regulatory bodies. This all coincides with the battle that XRP is having with the SEC. You see, we need regulatory clarity from all of these regulatory bodies, unfortunately, before all of these large institutions and banks choose, or not choose, but can utilize the full function of uh, XLM, XRP, Algorand, okay? They require regulatory clarity before the full functionality of these protocols can be utilized, which theoretically would result in us gaining hundreds of thousands of dollars, okay? To even millions and billions of dollars, depending on how much of these things uh, you as a particular individual might hold. Now, this is in no way financial advice. I'm not a financial. Here is a tweet from uh, Stellar.orgs or at Stellar.org on Twitter. This is from April 21st and it reads as such. It says, we've been stressing the importance of public dash private partnerships in developing regulatory policy around emerging technologies. That theme continues as we respond to FATF's draft guidance on regulating virtual assets and VASPs. All right, so now let's click on this link and let's see what this is all about, okay? So here we clicked on the link, it's at stellar.org slash blog slash regulating dash virtual dash assets dash VASPs, all right? Just in case you wanna look it up for yourself. And it is written by Danelle Dixon, who has been doing a myriad of interviews lately that you can look up on YouTube if you just type in Danelle Dixon. Very, very informative. And uh, she is doing a very, very good job, I might say myself. So here we go. Our response to FATFAs, that's what, how I'm going to say it, FATF's draft guidance. At SDF, we often stress the importance of public-private partnerships in developing regulatory policy around emerging technologies. Policymakers who engage with the industry experts to understand the complexity of technologies like blockchain tend to be better informed and in turn make better policy. So, we have another regulatory body, sort of like how FinCEN began, because we do know that FinCEN uh, ultimately, after hearing what Stellar said in their protest against these particular regu regulations, FinCEN began to actually modify what they were going to be doing uh, in a way that is more beneficial to blockchains, in a way that's more beneficial to Stellar XLM and every other uh, cryptocurrency out, out there that is waiting for regulatory clarity that needs regulatory clarity okay so fatfa is is another body that's trying to pass regulation without even understanding the technology without even considering uh, collaborating with or learning from the individuals who are creating this advanced technology let's continue on a corollary, corollary to that, as we said in our January comment letter on FinCEN's self-hosted wallet in PRM, is that the new technology deserves new approaches to regulation. We warrant that foisting antiquated rules onto entirely new paradigms doesn't work and can lead to unintended consequences. I definitely agree. I definitely agree. And I don't believe that because uh, I have seen this floated, this idea. I don't believe that the banks are able to create their own digital currencies and separate all of the bureaucracy that is involved with them ha being the controllers of that digital currency and yet also still trying to maintain antiquated rules. Also, the technology is not going to be very efficient because they don't know how to avoid friction. They don't know how to avoid spam. Uh, 
there is so much that goes into that. But no, I don't agree with that. So yes, uh, they are going to be needed and there is going to be uh, regulatory clarity because they will be needed by those financial systems. What has been built on XRP, XLM, Algorand is so efficient, so good. I don't think people grasp this, that it must be utilized in some capacity, even if it's built on top of, it must be utilized. That's just my particular opinion from reading the data. Let's continue on. Uh, it says, we warrant that foisting antiquated rules onto entirely new paradigms doesn't work and can lead to unintended consequences like collapses, but we'll go into that another time. Especially when regulators act without a full understanding to those new paradigms. We urged FinCEN to slow down and partner collaboratively with the blockchain community to develop a tailored fr framework to prevent financial crime without choking off the promise of networks like Stellar to serve financially excluded populations around the world. To realize both outcomes requires regulators to approach new technologies with an open mind. To accept the regulation must that regulation must evolve over time. Thankfully, it seems FinCEN may now be taking that approach. Okay, so they just wanted to say that to juxtapose that against how FATF is going about it. <laughs> They're being very archaic. They don't want to evolve. They don't want to advance. They want to force it where FinCEN was, was ready and willing to listen and to evolve, to adapt, to accommodate. FATF has been much more vicious and concrete in their ways, but we're fighting that as you're reading right here. Let's get into that now. So that's just a juxtapose. Let's go here now. But another regulatory body in the AML space, the Financial Action Task Force has stepped in to take their place. So let's continue. Doubling down on enforcing the old way. So they're fighting so hard to enforce this old way. Why? Because it benefits them and their benefactors. That's why. Those who they have been partnered with for so long, working with for so long, they don't want the old system to go away. So it has nothing to do with the new technology being inefficient or unsafe. It has nothing to do with financial crimes. We have so many regulatory bodies that already have been given the data that financial crimes are not that big of a sector within the crypto sphere. Not like how it used to be. Not like how it used to be. Uh, so it's not that. It's simply to keep the old way running so that the old uh, 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 benefiters of that system can continue to uh, make so much, so much money, so much money by the old system. Not understanding that the new system opens gateways to much more money, much more money, much more money, if better efficiency, everything is better. Let's continue on. But another regulatory body in the AML space, the Financial Action Task Force, FATF, has stepped in to take their place, doubling down on enforcing the old way without seeking input from the private sector. On March 19, 2021, FATF released draft updated guidance for a risk-based approach to virtual assets and VASPs, which represents a sweeping overhaul of the global AML recommendations. If adopted, please listen to this very closely. We all need to hear this and hear this very clear. If adopted, the draft guidance would dramatically expand the universe of businesses that would be defined as a virtual asset service provider, a VASP. The upshot of this uh, designation is to make nearly anyone, anyone who touches virtual assets or is involved with virtual asset products or platforms subject to the full panoply of AML regulations. That means you and I. So while Stellar is fighting this battle right now, you and I are going to benefit if they win because we won't be relegated to the panoply of AML regulations that are placed upon VAST because you and I, because we have dealt with virtual currencies, will not be held as VASP. <laughs> How crazy is that? That that's that's insane to me. Um, I am an individual. I am an investor. I am an Ahab investor. I am not a virtual asset service provider. I <laughs> I don't want to be included in your universe of business in your panoply of AML regulations. Not at all. So stellar, please. Keep fighting, throwing those haymakers. So let's continue on here. 
This raises some important questions. What's motivating such an expansion of terms and what are the implications? This is exactly what I was saying. What's motivating it? It's very suspicious. You have Danell Dixon herself asking these same questions in her article. So it's valid. Uh, let's go. While the FATF propo proposal opens with cursory references to financial crime, this broadening of the reach of AML regulations may not be driven by a genuine concern over virtual assets, use and money laundering. There you go. She just said it plain for you. It might not be motivated by that. They're using it as a guise, a smokescreen to do what it is they're trying to do, uphold the old archaic system. The draft guidance is short on facts. They don't even have any facts. Short on uh, the draft guidance is short on facts and concrete evidence to justify such a massive expansion of regulatory scope. In fact, evidence suggests that that virtual assets use uh, virtual assets use in illicit finance is just one one third of one percent, zero point three four percent, and falling a significantly lower incidence of financial crime than occurs with fiat currencies. This is unbelievable, man. Unbelievable. But stellar, keep fighting. We're, we're going to win and we're going to be millionaires. Some of us are going to have hundreds of thousands, thousands of dollars. We're going to have regulatory clarity. We are going to have it. We're going to keep fighting. Additionally, the proposal is framed through the lens of preserving the status quo. Historically, the global AML regime was premised on regulating centralized intermediaries, regulated, uh, 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 regulating centralized intermediaries. Correct me if I'm wrong. Stellar is decentralized like many of the uh, cryptocurrencies decentralized. So why are we dealing with them? More suspicious behavior, in my opinion. The global AML regime was premised on regulating centralized intermediaries that engage in the business of money transmission. What makes public blockchain networks transformative, transformative is that they are decentralized and empower in individuals by freeing them from dependence on intermediaries. Exactly. This seems to be precisely the innovation that concerns the FATF. I agree. Moreover, Full maturity of these protocols that enable P2P transactions could foreshadow a future without financial intermediaries. My goodness, my goodness. Danelle Dixon is doing a wonderful job laying out the case as to why this is nonsense. This is poppycock. This is ridiculous. And this is one of the things, these are one of the regulatory bodies that stands in our way, our way of millions and billions of dollars, potentially changing the effectiveness of the FATF recommendations. FATF appears more concerned with regulators protecting their turf than protecting against financial crime. But regulatory turf protection is not a basis for sound policy making. A fact FATF itself tactically acknowledged when it launched a new project to study and mitigate unintended, unintended consequences resulting from its own standards. That's, my, that's just mind blowing. That's mind blowing. They had to study themselves on what they were doing wrong because so much had been done wrong so that they had to, to sort of close off the faucet of problems that were occurring. I almost killed my light. That were occurring based upon errors that they were making. This this is mind blowing. I, I'm, I'm highly against certain regulatory bodies regulating themselves. There should be a watch, some watchdog that's watching them. And, you, you know, you shouldn't regulate yourself. There's a conflict of interest, I would think. Let's continue on here. But from our perspective, it is difficult to reconcile these contra contradictory actions by FATF. On one hand, through its de-risking review, FATF appears to recognize the role its standards have sometimes played in denying individuals access to basic to a uh, uh, basic financial services and seeks ways to rectify those past wrongs. On the other hand, 
Through its draft guidance, FATF seems determined to push expansive new rules that would drive a whole new wave of de-risking and curtail the most promising technological solution to the de-risking it has already caused. It's our sincere, sincere hope that after hearing from the many stakeholders joining us and voicing their concerns, if you guys are stakeholders, if you guys have any way to pull at the ear of the FATF, then please, uh, by all means, if you feel moved, then do that. If that's a decision you want to make, do that. Because any everyone that makes their voice heard is going to help push this uh, uh, regulatory body towards fair, fair regulatory clarity. We need fairness here. And then we can collect our millions. Filthy, filthy rich we will be. Uh, FATF re-examines its proposal for virtual assets and vast through the lens of its de-risking review, embraces a more uh, open-minded approach to decentralized te technologies and proactively partners with blockchain industry experts to enable it to craft more informed policies in the future. That's their sincerest hope, right? For more detailed analysis of the FATF draft guidance, please see the comment letters filed by the Blockchain Association and Chamber of Digital Commerce, which we are proud to support. Now, there is a link here if you guys wanna go a little bit deeper. We definitely can go a little bit deeper. I believe that understanding as much as we possibly can about not just the protocols, but what we're going through as far as regulation, regulatory clarity, this, this, these types of things affect us all. Imagine if they, everyone's concentrating on the SEC case, right? And let's say the SEC gives regulatory clarity, but no one is hearing or talking about FA, uh, the uh, FATF uh, uh, going against the crypto sphere and battling with Stellar, right? And then they decide to pass some, some sort of regulations that classify you and I as VAS. And then that messes everything up, but we never, we never had the opportunity to make our voice heard because we didn't hear about it. Well, Danelle Dixon is posting a blog here. I am making this video. Please share it if, if you can uh, and let people know that there are three regulatory bodies we are currently battling as crypto holders, as crypto companies, you know, anybody involved in the crypto sphere. We are all having our eyes very closely on these situations because we need to be free. We want to do well. We want to make money. We want to do good business. All of these positive things can only come if we win. And I believe that we will. So <laughs> there you have it. I am a man of my word. I said we would uh, cover that if people wanted us to cover this particular regulatory body. I said there were two. There's FinCEN. We covered FinCEN in the first video. We covered the FATF in this particular video. Uh, thank you for watching. I, I want to thank everybody out there who has been subscribing. I want to say thank you to all the commenters in the uh, comment section. I greatly appreciate everyone out there. So now that you have that information, what are you going to do with it? Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. I would greatly appreciate that. And if you could, please click that like button, turn it into a rocket and send it straight to the moon. And until next time, let's get to the money.